Hey guys, on today's video, I'm gonna install the new Super 55 gallon drum smoker kit from smokerplans.net on this rib barrel. Stay tuned. A question I get a lot is, will this thing even install on a ribbed barrel? Um, you can see over here, I've got one next to me that we've already put the intakes on. You can see the top of one of them there. On a smooth barrel, super easy install. It literally took us like, I don't know, three, four minutes to get the holes drilled to get the intake put on. So this barrel though, it might be a little bit more challenging. So there's a couple of options here um, on how you do it, but I'm gonna show you the way that I did it back in like 2014. Now the intakes are, are 20 inches tall and from this here to the bottom of this top ring, we've got 22 inches. Now the one thing I'll tell you is that these ribs are not the same on every barrel. This is a very common design on this barrel. So I'm going to cope it to fit this rib right here. Um, anyway, here I go. I'm going to go ahead and cut all these parts off and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our barrel cleaned up. We've got the, the intakes cut off from where they were. I cleaned up this hole so it's not really that sharp at all. Um, now, the important thing to know is, is that wherever your intakes were before, it's fine. It doesn't matter. They were straight across from each other. Or they were both in the very front. doesn't matter. As long as your intake hole is at the bottom of the barrel, or if you're making an intake hole, follow the instructions that came with the kit. I'm going to recommend an inch and a half hole. I like to keep that hole up about two and a half inches to the center of the hole, which is gonna leave you plenty of room in here to move that intake around. <clears throat> now, another important thing that I want you to keep in mind is the height of this rib. I've never seen a barrel that had a rib that from this surface up to the top of this surface vertically, I've never seen one that was more than three quarters of an inch. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. So if you wanna verify that number, Use your intake like this or a straight edge, set it across two ribs, take a tape measure and measure it. Mine's right at 7 sixteenths of an inch, so it's less than a half. Now, the reason that matters is <clears throat> because if you look at this intake, if this was taller than three quarters of an inch, it would block off most of this intake. If it's, and we already did the math for you, three quarters of an inch evenly like radiused out inside of this, leaves you way more than enough room for airflow to get through the intake. If it's more than three quarters of an inch, you're gonna start creeping up on it. Now, would it work? More than likely, yes, because a little pinhole, any drum guy that's got experience will tell you that a pinhole will actually help, well, you'll actually run overrun your temperature. So it needs to be dang sealed tight. So if it was more than the three quarters of an inch, it might still work, who knows? But we're recommending that. <clears throat> now, the question of, notching this thing, it will work. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I made a mark on here at 10 and a half inches, which is how high up. I want the center of this from the bottom of my intake up, right? Now I'm gonna show you a little tool. And you can pick this handy dandy thing up pretty much in any hardware store in the whole entire United States. This thing here is a contour gauge is what this is. I got this one from Harbor Freight. It's, it's plastic. What I really like about it is how wide the bristles are this way. I also like that it's got this edge right here, this sharp edge. I can really dial in on something I'm wanting to check. Now you push it all the way down and the back side of this ridge right here is on both sides. It'll hook on this plastic block and that's how you get everything perfectly even. Now when I flip it over like that, I can set this up on the top dead center and I'm guessing a top dead center, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I can push this down and if I push this block all the way across, it'll stop at the highest point along here. That's gonna help me to keep my edge right. Now flip it around and you can see how that's got that wedge there. We're gonna trace this, the, tall, the, the part that's farthest down. And we're gonna lay this down on a piece of cardboard. Now you could go ahead and just trace this right on the side of your intake, but take it from me off camera, I was jacking around trying to do that. It's, it's pretty hard. So just trace it on a piece of cardboard. Now, use a good old marker, mark that radius out. And this is just gotta be like, so there's two kinds of close. There's horseshoes close and there's hand grenades close. So hand grenades have a bigger spread, don't have to be as close. Horseshoes, it's gotta lean for you to get a point, right? Or it's gotta be within one horseshoe length. This just has to be horseshoes close, okay? So we're gonna cut on the 
the outs, the top side of this black mark with a razor knife. Just take your time, don't get in a hurry. If you got scissors, that's even better. If you really want to get wild, you could use an angle grinder. I don't care what you do. You could use your bandsaw if you want and make a wooden one. Like if you've got the same barrel all the time, you could make a jig out of some kind of plywood or something. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That's good enough. If you wanted to, you could take a flat disc and you could fine tune that all you want. But for the sake of argument, looking at that, I can silicone that, it's not a problem. Okay, so now we're gonna take and transfer this over to this intake. Now, if you wanted to, you're gonna have to be able to find that center mark right there. So you could take a square and run that down, which that's what I'm gonna do. Now we're gonna take our which I just had in my hand. And we're gonna trace it right there, right in the center. Okay, I'm gonna put that over here where I can see it though. Okay, now I've got my line. We're gonna cut on the top side of that line, but we've also got to square off the lip here. We're gonna cut it also. Now, when you're cutting this out, I would advise you to err on the side of caution and don't cut the whole entire thing completely out. Like cut just shy of your marks. You can always uh, cut a little more out, but it's really hard to put more in. All right, so now I'm gonna use my slicer disc to cut this. Now, like I said, if you're cutting this yourself, and because I don't have one already made that's cut, I don't know yet, I'm working on that. Um, but if you wind up cutting this yourself, you can use a bandsaw, like a vertical bandsaw. Um, heck, you can use a file, I don't care. It's more practical though to use a uh, angle grinder with a hard disc and grind a little bit at a time, a flat disc or a slicer disc. The slicer disc is gonna slice in and cut a lot faster, but it's gonna be almost impossible to get this little notch cleaned out to the profile of this rib. So I'm gonna recommend a grinder for that. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. show you that <clears throat> if you notice I cut down to the inside of that curve of that bend right there I didn't go past I just cut down to it then I flipped it upside down here and I cut from the back side now you're gonna it's okay to overcut just a little bit on the back side but don't overcut on the front side because it'll just look bad it's not gonna hurt the, the performance or anything You can see I got almost all the way through and this thing's just about ready to fall out on its own. You don't even have to cut all the way through, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and use the, the flap disc to grind this out the rest of the way. Yep, I like it. So you might wind up with just a little bit of a gap in this corner right here. Just because in that corner there is a radius, there's two radiuses working there. There's the one on the barrel, and then there's the, the like it's coming down, you know? You just, you might not be able to get that perfect. It's not a big deal. We're gonna silicone this entire thing anyway. So now I'm gonna change it back to my flap disc and I'm gonna clean up all my burrs and get ready to uh, install this thing. Okay, now this part's pretty simple. You've pretty much all done something like this before. First thing you gotta do is decide. In the kit, you're gonna get two different kinds of hardware. You're gonna get some 3 16 rivets. This is part number two. There's 24 of them, and at least right now you are. Um, and you're gonna get some 5 16 zip screws that's got a drill point on them. Um, my favorite, I'll be honest with you, is the drill points, just because they're so fast. Um, the rivets are pretty good too. Now. If you want, there's two different, you're, you're gonna have to supply your own rivet gun, of course. Sorry about that, but uh, there's two different kinds. Both of these came from Harbor Freight. They're both meh rivet guns. This one here is a love-hate relationship. This one right here cost another $5, I think, and it's a lot more accurate. It's a better rivet gun altogether. Um, it fits in there, you can push and squeeze together. But anyway, that stem pulls out, and there's a little ball on here that pulls that rivet and mushrooms it out to where it pops and then it's squeezed down. 
Uh, both are very effective. Now to put the rivet in, you're gonna have to drill every one of these holes out first, pull this thing back off, silicone it, put it back on, hopefully, hopefully it's in the right spot, then you're gonna put all the rivets in. Um, I don't like doing that, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna use the, intake, the uh, zip screws. Now for silicone, any flavor works. I'm of the opinion that food grade is just a thing they paid to put on here. I'm gonna use clear because the clear silicone, you know, will let whatever color is on the barrel bleed out. Now, if you're painting this barrel, do not apply silicone until after you're done painting. Silicone and paint do not get along. I, mean, I guess there might be some kind of magic paint out there I don't know about that will, or some kind of process you can use to prep the silicone, but to my knowledge, as of right now, paint will not stick wherever there's silicone at, and if in fact there's silicone there, it's gonna cause a thing called fish eyes in your paint. Just don't even get this open until you're done with paint. And if you're using the zip screws, that's a good thing. You can zip screw your part on and then you can take it back off, paint everything, come back, drill the holes out. Then you can use the rivets and the silicone and all that later if you wanted. Now this thing here, I always cut a very, very, very small hole. You can cut this off bigger if you want. There's all kinds of graduations, but I try to start at the very end where that little cut is right there, that little notch thing and I cut it on a 45 degree angle like that. If I wanna get real fancy, I'll squeeze that shut if I'm doing some detail work. But for right now, I'm not doing detail. We're just gonna put it on. So once you get that cut open, screw this on there. I've gotta rotate my barrel to get it to the spot I want it. We're gonna do this one here just cause it's in a better position. Do a little test fit here, mock up thing. Matter of fact, if you wanted to get real hairy legged, you could mark on the barrel where the edges of your part need to go so that you can kind of tell what you're done. And I like it right there. So we'll just make a mark there and there. That way whenever I put it on here, I know that my hole is in the center of my intake, right? So now I'm gonna put some silicone on here. Turn it over. Now, you can be generous if you want. The issue is if you're too generous, it's gonna spoosh out, right? If you roll from the bottom, you're gonna be a lot happier. And I put a bead on there that's about, I don't know, 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. And I put it on this side of my screws, like the inside of my screws is where I put it. I'm not gonna worry about that spot there right now. I'm gonna seal it up after I've got the part put on and I'm only putting silicone on the tab. I'm sure you guys have all done this or something like it in the past. Bam, there we go. Stick this bad boy on there. Make sure you got it pointed the right way. Damper holes go up. Yeah, I like that. It kind of self-centered itself there. That was kind of handy. All right. Go ahead and zip a screw in here. Now, my, my preference is a magnetic nut driver in an impact drill for these. And then when you get up in here, do the middle one first. And, and just, you know, they always say click, click, that's the Ooga Dooga. Don't need a lot. Just put like one, one, two little Ooga Doogas. If you go too much, it's gonna actually spit out the threads. This is a really thin barrel. Once you see that suck up tight like that, you're done. Anyway, we can go ahead and continue. See how nice that pulls up? Gets real tight. Boom, I'm gonna do the other side. Now I'm not painting this drum, I'm gonna oil it because I want all my history to show. I'm real proud of that history. Now, if it wasn't for the length of like cutting this out and all of that stuff, this process literally would have taken probably, I don't know, 15 minutes, probably. If you knew, if you already had a handle on it and knew what she's doing, if you watch this video about four or five times, this process goes super quick. Now, I want to point out, I really messed up on something and I'm going to own it right now. I forgot to put the damper blade on. So, you gotta put the damper blade on before you put this thing on there. So I'm just gonna take it off off camera and fix that.
But honestly, how's that? Let's back the camera up and look at it. Look at that. I mean, I, I really, really like these intakes. I feel like a dummy because I didn't put the blade on, but you can laugh at me, I don't care. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna take this back off there, put the damper blade on it, and uh, in the next video, I'm gonna wind up finishing out this barrel um, and then uh, light a fire in it, and we'll see what happens from there. It might be a series of videos, heck, I don't know. Oh, one more thing I forgot to point out. You got a silicone around this and around the top of this. Now this is like, you couldn't fit a piece of paper between that, like it is tight. You couldn't fit a hair in there, but it is really, really, really tight. So you probably could get away without silicone on top and bottom, honestly. But I'm gonna go ahead just for the sake of it, I'm gonna silicone all the way around that, and then I'm gonna silicone around my rib, and you're done. If you really wanna get fancy, you could, instead of silicone, you could use, uh, like a half by eighth inch Nomex, Nomex uh, self-stick gasket on this. And uh, that way you can pull it on and off if you feel like you need to for some reason. So can't imagine why, but you could. Anyway, thanks for watching.